In this video, we're going to do some more horizontally launched projectile problems. Let's start with this one. You're on top of a building and you throw a football horizontally with a velocity of 26 meters per second. Later, you find that the ball landed 32 meters from the base of the building. How high did you throw the ball from? Okay, so before I even get started, I'm going to give myself some room um, to work with my X sorry, and my Y motion. So remember, we're going to have X motion and Y motion separated because they are independent from one another. The only variable that goes between X and Y is time. Now I'm going to draw a picture of the problem. So here I am on, or you are on top of the building, and you perfectly throw that football horizontally, and pew, 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 it falls down and hits the ground. Or somewhere, I don't know. Um, and you know that it lands 32 meters from the base of the building. Okay, so let's work with the numbers that it gives us. A horizontal velocity of 26 meters per second. So I'll draw that velocity here. And because it uses the word horizontal, then I need to write V sub X because that is an X component of velocity. And I would put that velocity in my X column. I'd write VX is 26 meters per second. Now, this also tells me that I did not throw the ball, or you did not throw the ball, with any downward or upward initial velocity which means v y not your initial y velocity is zero. Now that zero isn't anywhere in the problem, but because it tells me that I start with a horizontal velocity, that means v y not is zero. Okay, now let's deal with this 32. 32 from the base of the building. So what I would do is I would say my initial position x not is zero, and my final position x is 32. That would go in my x column, x not equals 0, x equals 32 meters. Okay, great. Now, on the y side, it doesn't say this, but I can always use 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration due to gravity. And I know that I'm going to eventually want to figure out how high did you throw the ball from, so we'll call that y not, put a question mark next to it, because why not? And we'll go ahead and say that the final height that the ball reaches the ground is zero. Okay, great. Now, I need to find why not, but I don't have any y equations that have these three things in it. What I need to do is instead look at the x column and think about how I could figure out the amount of time that the ball is in the air for. Because if I find that time, then I can put that time in my y column. So our x equation is x equals vxt plus x naught, where x is like a little subscript. And I have everything in this equation to find t. First, let's get rid of anything that's zero. So the initial velocity is zero. So that's going to go away. And now to solve for time, I'm going to divide both sides by Vx, and that's going to give me t equals x over Vx. Okay, so t equals x, which is 32 meters, over Vx, which is 26 meters per second, and 32 divided by 26 is going to give me 1.23. Okay, great. You know what, let's just round that to 1.2. Now that I have a time of 1.2 seconds, I can put it in my y column. And now I have enough information to use this equation. y equals negative 1 half gt squared plus vy naught t plus y naught. And I'm going to plug in anything that's zero. So the initial y velocity is zero, therefore this whole term is going to disappear. Uh, and the final height, or final position in the y direction is zero. So that's going to go away. If I rewrite this, I'll get zero equals negative one half gt squared, let's say g, plus y naught, which if I add the negative one half gt squared to both sides, I get 
negative one half g or sorry positive one half gt squared uh, is equal to y naught, which I don't have to rearrange. That's what I want to find. So half of nine point eight times one point two seconds squared, which again we found that by looking in the x column first. Okay, so half of 9.8 is 4.9 times 1.2 squared gives you 7.056, so we'll call that 7.1 meters. So that's how high the ball was thrown from. Let's do another problem. Your mom finally lets you go off the high dive. You run off the diving board with a horizontal velocity and you land 4 meters forward in the water. If the diving board was 5 meters tall, what was the initial speed you ran off the diving board with? Okay, well, so here you are. Let's draw this problem. You're on a diving board, having the time of your life. You run off. Yay! And you have a horizontal velocity, which we will call V. And since it's a horizontal velocity, that's going to be Vx. Now, immediately, I need to start separating my x and my y information. So let's start with that vx. vx is, oh, it doesn't tell you. You know what? What the initial speed you ran off the diving board with, that is what we're trying to find. So I'll put a question mark next to it. Oh, cool. But since I know that this was a horizontal velocity, that does tell me that vy0, the initial y component of velocity, is zero because you didn't dive like up at an angle or down at an angle. Okay, um, let's keep going through the problem. It tells you you land four meters forward in the water and the diving board was five meters tall. So let me draw some water. And I'll do a little dotted line here to represent the front of the board. This is like saying your initial x position is zero and then eventually, here you are, having the time of your life, because you're a kid and you went off the diving board, um, you would end up at a final x position of 4 meters. Uh, and we can do the same thing with your heights. We can say that when you hit the water, you're at a final height of 0. We choose that to be the ground 0. And we can write that here. You know, I should write all this down x not equals 0, x equals 4 meters. Um, and then, yeah, okay, so now we go back to the y's. So the water that you land at is 0, and your initial position, y not, is the height of the board, 5. So I would put that over here, 5 meters. Okay, great. Now, you'll notice that there are no other numbers in the word problem, um, but we can still assume that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, as always. All right, so now let's, let's think about this x column. I want to find that x velocity. What do I need to find it? In our x column, we have the equation vxt plus x0, which the initial x position is 0, so we can just get rid of that. And to find vx, that initial speed we ran off the diving board with, we're going to divide both sides by t. Okay, so vx is equal to x over t. And I know what x is, it's 4 meters. But what about t? Well, that's a clue that we should go to our y column and think about whether or not we have enough information to find time. And it turns out, yeah, we do. We use the same equation from last time. Negative 1 half gt squared plus vy naught t plus y naught. I'm going to get rid of zeros. So the initial velocity uh, in the x direction is zero. Sorry, the y direction is zero. So we get rid of that. The final height is zero. So we get rid of that. And this is going to be zero equals negative 1 half gt excuse me, squared plus y not, or just like last time, 1 half gt squared equals y not. But this time I want to find time, <laughs> which means I need to multiply both sides by 2. If I do that, then I get rid of the 1 half. 
then divide both sides by g, getting rid of g on the left. And the last thing that's left for me to do is take the square root. So t is equal to the square root of 2 y naught over g, which is the square root of 2 times 5 meters over 9.8 meters per second squared is almost the square root of 1. Okay, so the square root of 10 meters over 9.8 meters per second squared. The m's will cancel and leave you with 1 over 1 over second squared, which is the same thing as second squared. So um, 10 over 9.8 seconds squared. And when you take the square root, that second squared becomes second. OK, enough stalling. The answer is 1.01. You know what? We're going to call that 1.0 seconds. We're going to round it. So the time is 1.0 seconds. Now that we know this time, we can use it for our x column, 1.0 seconds. So now I can divide 4 meters by 1 second and get that the x velocity was 4 meters per second. So you ran off the diving board with an initial velocity horizontally of 4 meters per second. Wow, your mom is so proud. One more problem. Your potato launcher has a muzzle velocity of 8 meters a second. You shoot a potato horizontally from the top of a bridge. The potato is in the air for three seconds before hitting the ground. How far from the bridge did the potato land, and how high is the bridge? Okay, so let's just go ahead and draw the bridge like a little cliff. And here you are. You launch a potato, which let's just make a little spud. That's a horizontal velocity. Um, so we're going to call that velocity, this should be a little bit more horizontal. We're going to call that horizontal vx, and you know that it's 8 meters a second, which signals me to make an x and y chart and write vx equals 8 meters per second to store that horizontal initial velocity. It's horizontal, which means the initial y component of velocity is 0 because it's not being like shot down or shot up, and I know that it takes ooh, three seconds. Now that three seconds actually works in both columns because it's the same in x and y. Okay, we want to find how far from the bridge did the potato land and how high was it. So what that means is I need to write x naught equals zero. Here's the potato. And then x equals question mark. So x naught equals zero, x equals question mark. Um, and then y not equals question mark because I want to figure out the initial height it was launched from and say that the final position it reaches the ground is zero. Okay, so y not equals question mark and y equals zero. Uh, of course, in the y column, we know that the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, um, we actually don't need any information from x to solve for y or any information to solve um, in x with y because we know that the time is three seconds in both. So I can just go ahead and for x use my equation. Uh, the final position is the x velocity times time plus the initial x position. Get rid of that initial x position because it's zero. Um, and then yeah, all I have to do to figure out x where it lands is take eight meters a second and multiply that by three seconds. The seconds cancel and I get 24 meters. Ba-bam. To figure out how high, um, I'm going to use the same equation that we've been using all along. Negative 1 half g t squared plus v y naught t plus uh, y naught. The initial velocity in the y direction is 0, so that term goes away. The final height is 0, so that goes away. Again, nothing new here. Okay, add it to both sides, so we get this equation and now I just solve for why not. Why not equals half of 9.8 meters per second squared times the time of 3 seconds squared. So half of 9.8 is 4.9 times 3 squared is 9 gives me 44.1 meters. Boom! 
you did it. You're awesome. This video is over.